What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Dean Runner here and welcome back to the final test for the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 and today we're going to be taking it out on the long run. There we go guys, a one and a half hour long run done and dusted in the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2, meaning we finally wrapped up all testing in this shoe. Today I'm going to give you my thoughts on how this thing performed on the long run, and then of course the final video on the shoe will be once we've reached over 100 miles and I'll give you my final thoughts and my overall impressions of this shoe. So if you're excited for today's video guys, make sure you hit that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and without further ado, let's dive into how this thing did on the long run. So today's long run was slightly shorter than anticipated, 1 hour 35 minutes done and dusted in the shoe, meaning that finally we've taken it out for a decent length of time. Now today I ended up going out on some nice trails with James, so I managed to pass the time nice and easily. I was thinking a lot about this shoe whilst I was running. This thing, if you've seen in my speed test and my first impressions, they've given me mixed thoughts and today I was currently hoping to get some kind of overall perspective on the shoe, but I'm still left searching for the shoe's real purpose. I've got to be honest with you. Today what I wanted to do at some point was to hit some not top end speeds but to try and pick up the pace a little bit in the long run and see how it felt. There's a few things that I want to say about it in terms of the length and duration, how it felt across the total time, uh, how it felt running slow and then how it felt as I was picking up the pace. So first things first, I, I stand by what I said, the Zoom X foam in the shoe is really really nice, really comfortable and I got home and my feet felt absolutely great in this shoe. But one thing I am finding is my ankle, my right uh, foot is rocking in slightly. In terms of support, I know it's a neutral shoe. I do find some neutral shoes are a little bit more supportive than others. This thing, we're going to see how we go with it. I don't think I'm going to get the duration out of it that I would like, not for the fact that the Zoom X foam it's going to give up on me quickly, but just for the fact that as I plant my right foot, it does rock in a little bit too much. And I was noticing it on the trails quite a bit. In terms of the duration, though, as I said, it held up great. I really, really liked it. Massive tick for the length of time. It is a shoe that I can certainly imagine myself doing some marathon long run workouts in. And I can't wait to get my teeth into maybe a two and a half hour long run in this shoe with some mar marathon pace or half marathon pace stuff thrown in there for good measure. Uh, in terms of running slow, though, I just can't get on with a shoe when I'm running slow. It's just not a shoe cut out for running slow. I don't like it in the slightest. Um, I, just, I just don't want to plod in it. It felt really bizarre going eight and a half, nine minute miles up and down trail hills. And I know that's not what the shoe's designed for. I get that, but I like a shoe that can be diverse and can do all things. If you're buying a shoe at the end of the day and you do all sorts of different types of workouts and long runs and short runs, you want a shoe that can cover it all. I'm not 100% sure or sold on the idea that this thing is going to do that for you, but as I expected, last two miles when I was out on my own and I parted company with James, I didn't pick up the pace dramatically at all, but I hit some low seven minute mile pace and it felt much better. It felt, it felt like that's where its sweet spot was. So for me, I think overall, it did really well. It handled the duration perfectly. And when I picked up the pace, it was great. But unfortunately, when I was running slow and just plodding, it just, I don't know. A lot of you in the comments of my other videos have said to me, that you do find that you enjoy taking this on your long slow runs and that's great i you know i'm glad that you get on with it i've just i've got to be honest in these things it's just not my cup of tea when it comes to the slow stuff so how do i see myself using it for the long runs in future well i'm certainly going to be using it on long runs again um, and i'm super pumped to be able to try it in some marathon pace long runs over two hours especially on the cycle track i think when i can get into some kind of groove that's where this thing's going to come to life the zoom x foam is really going to hold out for me uh, hopefully and we'll see how we get on. So overall I've got to say it's going to be a decent long run shoe. 
I just think it's going to be a decent long run shoe that's going to, when I want the workouts to be in there. The Fuel Cell Propel, the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel is still that ultimate long run shoe that I love that allows me to go slow without not wanting me to kick on it. It doesn't, I don't know, this thing made me feel a bit of pressure to move forward. Um, the Propel doesn't. So I think I'm going to be alternating shoes in the long runs between those two for now. Um, so those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear what yours are in the comments below. Let me know if you like running in them on the long run or if it's not a long run shoe for you. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. And that's it for today's video, guys. Final uh, impressions after 100 miles will be coming at you hopefully in the next month or so. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends. Do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Until then.